Welcome to the demo portion of today's training, the wrong turn or the right turn. Now with the exception of the Cisco videos, which are very pertinent to our subject matter, I normally don't put advertising inside of these presentations. But when this presentation was initially presented to the pilot group, many members of the pilot group strongly encouraged me to use this next advertisement as it best demonstrated what we're trying to communicate here. So, here you go. Let's hide in the attic. No, in the basement. Why can't we just get in the running car? Are you crazy? Let's hide behind the chainsaws. Smart. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you're in a horror movie, you make poor decisions. That's what you do. Shh, I'm being quiet. Breathing on me. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. So our first demo is a demo of credential theft, and this is based upon real events that occurred here in our organization back in March of 2018. In this particular case, we have our victim's computer, and his name is Matt, and he receives an email from Roberta that has a proposal and says to review the PDF attachment. In this particular case, it says you have pending incoming docs from Duran Roberta, and there's a link to a PDF file. In this particular case, Matt just hovers over the link and clicks it, it takes him to a web page where he can sign into Dropbox with any email provider. So, what does Matt do? He takes the wrong turn. Oh, jeez, whoa. Did you see the way those guys looked at us? Who wants to go skinny dipping? You hate pancakes? I'm, I'm gonna make you something else. What am I doing here? I fell into the water. I uh, dove in and rescued you. We'll go find your friends. You should relax. Tucker and Dale are on the case. What is this place? It's just a cabin. It doesn't mean they're psycho killers. Dale? What are you doing? I'm, I'm digging a crapper hole. You mind if I help? He's making her dig her own grave. No! Oh, good. Look, your friends are here. Ah! Ah! It's a suicide pact. These kids are coming out here and they're killing themselves all over the woods. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Ah! Time to die, freak. Ah! Ah! Fire! Stop, stop the rope! No, don't, don't use that. So because Matt took the wrong turn, here we are with our attacker's evil listener, and the attacker now has access to Matt Bishop's account credentials, his email, and his nice long passphrase. The next step that the attacker did is set up access to Matt's email so that Matt's email could be used for further phishing and credential harvesting attacks. Now, while the attacker may have utilized scripts to perform this activity, you'll essentially see what was done. Since we have Matt's email account and password, we can set up access to all of his Office 365 information from anywhere in the world, which is exactly what the attacker did. And there it is, full access to Matt Bishop's account. Now the first thing that the attacker did in our example is he prepared the account so that it could be used in further phishing. Since the attacker will send a large number of emails from this account, the last thing that the attacker wants is for Matt to see any replies from any of the recipients, as this will tip Matt off to the fact that his account has been compromised. So the attacker then set up an Outlook rule so that if any email is sent it just to Matt, place that new email in the deleted items folder. Why? Because no one looks for new emails in the deleted items folder, but the attacker will be. The attacker names it system rule only, so it looks benign, and it's all set to go. Next, the attacker prepared a new PDF document that will be used in this particular phase of the phishing attack that include Matt Bishop's name. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just reuse the email that we initially used from Roberta's account, We'll remove the old attachment. We'll add our new attachment with Matt Bishop's name. We'll clean up the subject and the email itself. And we'll send it to our new group of victims, in this case, a group called Managers. So here's one of the recipients who received this email from Matt Bishop, supposedly. 
saying to preview the PDF attachment. And this particular person decides to reply to Matt and say, hey Matt, did you send this intentionally? Well, here's the problem. Matt's not going to see that email, but the attacker does. There's the new message inside of deleted items. And so what does the attacker do? Since he's in control of the account, he replies. This was the exact language used by the attacker back in March of 2018. I sent it as a proposal. I think you'll be interested in the click on the download. You'll be directed to OneDrive to log in and access the file. And you have options to choose your email supporter. Click Send. Deletes that email. And the real Matt Bishop had no clue what just happened. So the theme in a lot of these horror movies surrounds young people that go out in the wilderness in places like West Virginia and the Appalachians and they get lost and then bad things happen to them. Well, that's an exaggeration. West Virginia is a beautiful place. As a matter of fact, this is a video that I took while I was there. But if you're going to make the right turn, why go out camping with the potential for bad things happening when you can stay at this hotel, which is also in West Virginia? Yep, you can drink great wine, you can eat some great food, you can go golfing, you can ride horseback, you can go bowling, get a massage, do some swimming, maybe even some fly fishing. Hey, go here. That's the right turn. So what if we had taken the right turn? We open this PDF and immediately see that there are some issues with it. There's some grammatical issues. The first and the last name reversal is kind of strange. But one of the most powerful things that we can do when we receive something unexpected that has a link in it is to closely examine the link to see where it would take us if we clicked on it. So we can carefully hover our mouse over the link without clicking and the destination URL should appear. In this case, it's a shortened URL. Go to l.ink forward slash 1pnv. Now, while shortened URLs do have appropriate uses, such as making a longer URL easier to type, they're also typically used by bad guys to disguise the actual destination, in other words, where it would take us if we clicked on it. So we can use a tool to examine these links without actually visiting them. So the first thing we want to do is copy this link. We can do this by carefully right-clicking the link and choosing Copy Link, or we can just write the link down. Then we visit our friend VirusTotal. VirusTotal is owned by Google, and what VirusTotal does is it inspects files that we submit with over 70 antivirus scanners, and it also inspects website links that we submit. It does that with URL scanners and some domain blacklisting services, and it also has a number of other tools that it uses to determine the legitimacy of content. Any user can select a file from their computer or a website link and submit it to VirusTotal. In this case, we click on the URL bar and we paste our link into VirusTotal. Now, we can see right away that there's only two that show this as suspicious, but what we're more interested in is where does this link actually take us. And so if we click on the details button, we can actually see the final URL. In this case, it's geniustours.net. It isn't Microsoft, it isn't Dropbox, or anything that we expect. Instead, it's one of those websites that's probably been hacked, as we discussed before, and the phishing content was placed by the attacker on that website. It's not the destination we would expect from a legitimate link. In reality, most of the time, it's just that simple. If we pay close attention to where a link takes us and compare that with the legitimate site, we can easily determine whether something is legitimate or not. So let's go ahead and copy that destination URL, and we'll enter it into VirusTotal once again, and paste that, and we can see that once we do that, we can see that Google Safe Browsing shows it as a phishing site. So here's the same website from the original example. Pay very close attention to the links that are presented to you. If you end up visiting a site that asks for your credentials, look up in the address bar. Is it legitimate? Obviously this one's not. Is it what you expect? Because most of the time this is a dead giveaway that the website isn't the one that you may have been expecting. 
I want to show you a couple of extra tools that you can use in addition to the ones that we've already shown you. The first one is called isitfishing.org and you can paste a URL of a particular site in there and it will tell you whether it thinks it's fishing or not. But what's really interesting about this site is that play button on the bottom left hand side. If you click it, it actually shows you a live fishing feed. And in this particular case, this shows you sites that have been submitted to this engine so this one was submitted 10 seconds ago and I paused it. But notice that it claims to be Bank of America, but look at the URL, thepinkdiamond.com.tr. This obviously isn't Bank of America. We know right away that this site is false. Here's another one, very interesting. Phishing Microsoft OneDrive, but look at the URL. Again, it's trying to hide its location using tinyurl.com. Here's another one. This is a PayPal site, again, using tinyurl.com. This one happens to be in the United States, although the language is in French. And then this one's very interesting. This claims to be DocuSign, but notice the URL, eu-docusigns-net-docxx.silverfox-pei.icu. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Notice they try to put DocuSigns in there, making you think that it's a legitimate URL, when in reality it's not. But more importantly, what really makes this site illegitimate, I mean, yeah, who uses this anymore? So here's a favorite of ours. It's called urlquery.net. And you can paste a URL in here, and it will give you a lot of technical information that most of you will probably never use. But here's what's really cool. This particular engine will not only report back on what it thinks a website is, It'll also visit the website on your behalf and take a picture of it. So all you have to do then is click on the picture on the right hand side and you're not visiting the actual website but you can see what it looks like. And in this particular one, this is a piece of scareware. It's saying, hey, call Microsoft immediately. A porn virus has been detected by a firewall, whatever a porn virus is. And this is a way to scare us into calling them and then paying them money. Finally, last but not least, there's URL Void, which is a great website reputation checker. And you can paste a URL in that site, and it will tell you that the website in this case was identified by five scanning engines. You can go down to the scan reports, click on View More Details, and it will give you the details about that website. For our next demo, let's talk about malicious payloads. By malicious payloads, I mean attachments. It could be a file that's attached that you're supposed to run. It could be a Word document with macros inside of it. It could even be a malicious PDF document. In this particular case, Roberta's account is still being used for phishing. And the attacker sends Matt an Office 365 document, which in reality is just a Word document with macros in it. And those macros are malicious. And it says this document has been set to blur due to security reasons and for your safety, whatever that means. But it says click Enable Content to view this content of this document. What does Matt do? He doesn't check it out with Roberta. Macros have been disabled, so he enables them on the document. And Matt takes the wrong turn.
chose poorly. And because Matt took the wrong turn, here we are as the attacker, and we have a connection from Matt Bishop's computer. We now remotely control it. There's his user ID. And we're going to interact with his computer, and we're going to elevate our privileges because we want to install a keylogger. What that will do is it will capture every keystroke that Matt Bishop types on his computer, including usernames and passwords. So there we go. Where it says valid results return, that means that Matt is typing something. Meanwhile, what's Matt doing? He's logging into the ESS system because it's time card time for Matt. And there we go. We have captured Matt's username and his password, which will allow us to access the ESS system as him. Now, why is this important? This is a memo that came from the Department of Homeland Security earlier this year regarding credential harvesting campaigns that target direct deposit information. And basically, the attack is a phishing email that may originate from a compromised internal email account just like it is in our example here. But if the recipient provides their credentials to a website, or in this case, we're able to steal those credentials, the cyber threat actor then attempts to use those credentials to log in and change the recipient's direct deposit information within the payroll system, which is typically discovered when the paycheck does not arrive as expected. What does this mean? It means that your account not only protects your organization's data, it protects your information as well, which is why it is so critical for you to protect your account at all times. So here we are as the attacker. We've logged in and we have access. And we can start the direct deposit wizard and set up Matt's next paycheck to come to us. What if we had taken the right turn? That's the cup of a carpenter. There's only one way to find out. The most important right turn that we can make in this scenario is to always trust but verify. If we receive a document, even from a coworker that we're not expecting, or that we're not currently working on with them, or something that in any way is unexpected, we don't want to reply to the email because the attacker could be in control of the account. What we should do is pick up the telephone and verify that the document is legitimate. Because if we do just that, we're going to be successful in making the right turn 99% of the time. And for our final demonstration. The Trojan Horse. You see, everybody wants to download something free every once in a while, try something out on their computer. And that's what Matt's doing right now. He's looking for a, a free video editor. Who, I mean, who hasn't done that? And he pounces on one. Video hack free video editing software for non-commercial use. If you're using it for this purpose, you can download the free version here. What does Matt do? He downloads the free version, and without checking out the file to make sure it's clean, he just runs it on his computer. Matt takes the wrong turn. Where's Earth? Seems we have intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. Human? Unknown. Can you see this? I've never seen anything like it.
And what's the worst thing that can happen? Ransomware. Your files are all encrypted. You either have to restore them from a backup or, and hopefully you'd never have to do this, actually pay someone to get your files back. Ransomware is really, really bad stuff. But in this case, Matt's computer actually gave us an alert and we're able to view the alert on virus total. We're able to see that 13 out of 67 malware engines saw video hack setup .exe as malicious. If Matt had simply used VirusTotal before running the program, things would have been much better for him. What if, instead of going to LV-426, the crew of Alien just came home to Earth and sat on the beach? There'd be a whole lot less sequels. Or what if, even better, they went and stopped at the Galaxy Grill? <laughs> Not again. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. So what if Matt had taken the right turn, downloaded the file, and then uploaded it to VirusTotal? If VirusTotal was not familiar with the file, it would begin an analysis just like you see here. If it was already familiar, it would provide you the results almost immediately. But here you have a particular file that when uploaded to VirusTotal is identified by five of 67 malware engines as unsafe. Now people ask, well, why only five out of 67? Two things I think are important here. Number one, it's very, very hard for the antivirus industry to keep up with every possible file out there. They're constantly changing. But if you do see that several of them have identified the file as a potential problem, be very, very, very suspicious of that file. The second thing is this. This is a demonstration that if you are relying on antivirus as your only protection, that puts you at risk. The best antivirus that exists is your brain. So by using these tools and techniques in addition with the defenses on your computer, you can be far safer. Now someone also asked me, hey, well, what does a really, really nasty file look like when it's uploaded to VirusTotal? And so I, in a very safe, controlled environment, I downloaded a very nasty piece of ransomware and then uploaded that ransomware to VirusTotal. And as you can see, 54 out of 64 antivirus engines see this as a problem. So they do a pretty good job here. Now with all these tools and techniques we've been showing you, you don't have to do these things at work. You can simply forward anything that seems suspicious to security. And our top dog and cat security team there will take a gander at it and uh, we'll let you know if it's safe or not. However, the intent is to arm you with tools and techniques that you can use if you can't get a hold of us or if you're on your own, as well as help us all understand the importance of closely examining URLs and closely examining destinations before surrendering any credentials or taking any action whatsoever. The other really important point to make with regards to all of this is that it's really important to pay close attention to what you receive in your inbox and be very careful to analyze it and look at it before you act upon it. We get phone calls all the time from folks who have surrendered their credentials or clicked on a link and got infected or something bad happens. And three quarters of the time, they tell us that the reason why they did that is because they were in a hurry. They just zoomed through their email and saw something and didn't slow down to see if it was legitimate and just acted on it right away. And the bad guys know that we do that by nature. And so they take advantage of that, hoping that we won't pay attention to what we receive and that we'll fall for their trick. So the most important piece of advice there is to slow down. Just take a look at exactly anything that you receive that is unexpected or even in the littlest bit suspicious. Slow down, take a close look at it. If you're at work, you can submit it to security. If not, 
the tools and techniques we've shown you hopefully will help you in terms of determining whether or not it's legitimate.